I'd like to introduce Nandana before she comes on stage. Uh, Nandana is a poet, she's a translator, an actress, and uh, also a child rights activist. So she does wear many hats. Uh, we are very glad to have her today. She has flown in specially from New York to be here with us today. Um, Nandana, please come to the stage. Uh, we'd love to hear more of your poetry. And some of her poetry is also available in her book, Acrobat, which is here with us today. So if you would like to get a copy of it, please do so after the show. Uh, Nandana, uh, please come to the stage. Thank you so much, um, Samya. It's so wonderful to be here with all of you today. Thank you for coming uh, to this very special event on a Sunday afternoon. I have to say that I'm, I'm so touched to get this prize. Um, this is the first time I'm getting an award for poetry as well. I've gotten a few awards for other things like films and children's books, but um, this is very special to me. Um, but I'm deeply honored, actually, to be in a room filled with people who love poetry. This is a true privilege. This is not a situation that we find ourselves in often. So I'm so grateful to uh, the Wingwood Poetry Prize team, as well as um, Delhi Poetry Slam for uh, supporting poetry in the steadfast and completely committed, passionate way uh, that it does. So can we have a big round of applause for Wingwood Poetry and for Delhi Poetry Slam, please. Thank you. Um, I don't have a speech prepared. I, I thought I would just say a little bit about um, my mother and my grandmother, who were both very beloved poets. My grandmother was Radharani Devi, my mother, Nagunita Dev Shen. Um, some Bengalis here would probably know their work. Any Bengalis? Yes, <laughs> a few. Um, my grandfather, Lawrence Vidip, was also a very well-known poet, in fact. But I grew up in a house with, filled with poetry, uh, uh, with my mother and my grandmother, and both of them believed deeply in the power of poetry. I want to just read out um, something that my mother wrote about poetry. I speak for poetry as being central to a woman's freedom. Yes, I am partial. I cannot be and do not wish to be objective in this one respect. It is not only the printed word that spells inner freedom for us women. There are oral songs composed by village women. They sing their own sorrows and anguish. Poetry is a means of our survival. It is a window through which we can breathe. So my mother and my grandmother both believed in this, in the vital necessity of, of poetry. There's a, a wonderful American poet called Audre Lorde who wrote, poetry is not a luxury. And I, I grew up in a house where everyone believed that. Um, so instead of birthday cards, we would write birthday poems to each other. And instead of being taken to the circus or the zoo, I was always taken to Kobe Shaw Melons, you know, poetry meets and literary um, festivals, which I have to say I complained about a lot as a child. I did not think that was the ideal way to spend my time. But looking back, I'm so grateful to my mother and my grandmother for um, bringing us up that way because that is why poetry has become such a, a lifelong companion and ally to me. Um, we spoke about this a little bit yesterday as well, but I think we all agree that what we love most about poetry is its ability to explain ourselves to ourselves. And I think we all rely on poetry for that. Um, in my mother's case, um, she also often said that her poetry anticipated what was happening in her life, that there was a kind of deep and magical power poetry had to somehow predict, uh, like an oracle, uh, events that she had no idea about years before they happened, like her moving back to India, like the marriage that my parents had 
which became a friendship, but uh, at some point stopped working as a marriage, that that would happen, etc. So there is so much that is powerful and almost inexplicable about poetry. I feel very grateful to have the gift of poetry in my life. Um, I wanted to uh, read the poem um, that uh, the Wingward Poetry uh, judge, Jan, a jury, um, sweetly selected. Um, but before that, I just wanted to say that my mother also said that poetry was a means, as I read out, was a means of her survival and was a way of coping for her, which I understood, but I didn't fully, uh, I didn't fully experience until after she had passed away. Um, she and I had always, stayed very strongly connected through poetry. So when I left for Harvard, I would constantly get, you know, those blue aerograms, I don't know if they still exist, uh, which were filled with script poetry, scribbled poetry that she was working on. Um, and sometimes she would send me those yellow postal envelopes, with these little yellow envelopes, which were always too small, but she would like wrap photocopies of uh, poetry that she had written that had come out in Desh magazine or uh, other publications. So we had a very poetry-filled relationship. And we, we signed this book just exactly two weeks before my mother passed away. It's a book of my English adaptations of, of my mother's poetry. And um, she was delighted that that was going to happen, but I was not prepared for her to leave me when she did. Shortly after this, the pandemic hit the world. and if, we all remember that that was a very dark period of mourning um, for everyone across the world. And the proximity and, what should I say, befuddlement of grief made it a very difficult project to work on because every time I worked on a poem, I could hear her voice, literally. It felt like he was, she was just standing next to me um, and speaking to me, so it was, in, it was heartbreaking, but when I look back, I realize that it's only because I had that, her poetry and I was, I had steeped myself in that poetry that I actually made it through that very dark period. I think it would have been a time where I would have otherwise uh, disintegrated uh, emotionally if I did not have my mother's poetry with me, which, um, made me, which allowed me to continue having a conversation with her, and it allowed me to hold it together. So let me read to you Daybreak, and I will read, this is a poem that I wrote about my grandmother, but my mother wrote a poem about my grandmother as well, which I uh, adapted into English, which I will read to, and if there's time, I'll read a couple more poems about poetry. Daybreak, for my grandmother, Radharani Devi. Whenever I think of you, I think of all the early mornings. How you laughed like a girl as we listened for the cannon to fire and the foghorns to blow on New Year's Eve. Eyes sparkling, you dealt us round after round as hearts and diamonds slipped through our fingers all night. Kings and queens, knaves and clowns waiting impatiently for the first day to break. How you pulled us out of bed with no mercy on Mohalaya dawn. We huddled near the, near the radio, half asleep, scalded by tea, until airwaves all around us exploded into heady prayer, like a rush of steam rising up from every home on our street. You knew each verse by heart, and every year Ma cried when the goddess was born. How you love to march with us like a drill master on your morning walk. Grumbling, we dragged our groggy feet to the dry fountain where, years ago, you had arranged Ma's girlhood parties. You paused near the shuli, trying to bend, and in a flash, we were groping wet earth, grabbing orange-tipped fragrance in the fog, greedy and impossibly awake. How you walked into my room with unsteady steps on the winter nights of my finals. To bed, you scolded, even as I muttered formulas I'd never follow and dozed over tea-stained history. 
You denounced all nighters, but you stayed up with me every night until we heard the prayers from the mosque echo through our hearts through cold smoke. How you clutched your magnifying glass as I tiptoed past you asleep in your chair during my summer break. You never stopped reading the fine print while I couldn't even see how that big sky was magnifying pink shapes everywhere in bold. As I stumbled into bed, unsteadier than you, just before you would start your day. Whenever I think of you, I think of all the early mornings I missed. Thank you.